Yes, hello. Now, can you hear me? I guess you can. Correct? Okay. Thanks. Um, so, Asalaamu Alaikum everyone and I welcome you to the third lecture of our, um, our stati statistics short course. Um, I'll, okay, so as, uh, today we'll do some hands-on with the SPSS. Um, I have uh, some data prepared for you and uh, we'll do um, t-test and first what I'll do is I'll go through all the um, all the slides that I have prepared for today's class and then uh, we'll do the hands-on with SPSS and you will realize that after today's class that once you learn how to do the t-test in SPSS, you you'll see that how the the data that how by using the data that you have collected, you will be able to analyze it. You will be able to check your hypothesis, and and we so in the in the next few slides we'll learn how to do that. Um, so again, today I'll request you to um, recite a Surah Fatiha for Ali Murtaza Zaidi, and then we'll begin our uh, today's lecture. So thank you everybody for this favor. Um, now this, the first slide that you see today, I uh, today I have um, I have a number of boxes that are randomly spread all over the slide, and they are not organized in any manner. The reason I did that because I wanted to join them in real time so that we can see how the how the process, how the analysis, how the methodology of doing statistic analysis works, um, and it's it's not necessary that I mean this is this is just an ideal condition. It's not necessary that we go through all these steps, but this is something. This is an ideal condition. I would say this is what I did in my dissertation. This is what uh, is what is expected from you all. To do in your do for your dissertation or for your MS thesis, etc. It's just a, this slide is just a recap of our uh, previous two lectures. So we began with the discussion of data collection. Now, data collection, whether you go out in the field and collect the data, whether you conduct an experiment in your lab and collect the data, whether you use previously collected data for your analysis. But, of course, all these statistic, statistical analysis require data. One more thing that I would like to share with you today is that there are two kinds of analysis. One is qualitative analysis, another is quantitative analysis. We, the engineers, um, people who are more in sciences, we go for um, the quantitative analysis, where we collect the data which, is, which are related to the numbers. However, uh, sociologists, psychologists, um, they usually go for the um, qualitative analysis. And for the qualitative analysis, where they study, um, where they study a, the, the person's life, or they have um, whether it's a psychological or sociological analysis related to some problem in the society, the sample size is very small, so it could be just one person. However, in our case, we always require the, the bigger the sample size, the larger the sample size, the better the results would be. So the data collection, and then it is, and it's followed by data cleaning cleaning and filling in the missing value. So data cleaning means you find out there are there could be numbers and numbers of variables. If you acquire data from some other source, there could be like hundreds of variables in there. But it's not necessary that you need all those variables for your analysis. So what you do is to save your time and also to save the uh, computation, uh, or you make the computation faster and efficient, you take out all those variables that are not needed by you. And also, it's not necessary that you use 24,000 data points for your analysis. So you take, you randomly select some um, sample out of that. 
that is called uh, and then data cleaning uh, includes other aspects also uh, filling in like for example the variable the way the variables are defined you may want to define them in different format in different category etc and of course then comes the miss filling in the missing values so if there are missing values we discuss those uh, we didn't discuss them in detail, but one of the easiest uh, way to do is, is to do the linear interpolation, and then there are other methods as well. Then what you do is you organize the data. Now the data organization, it depends whether you do it graphically, whether you do it in tabular format, it's just, or whether you do, whether you, whether you sort out your data in ascending and descending order. It all depends how you, how you plan to use your data. So organizing data, and then organizing data comes back and forth, like it's in the beginning, and then you do some analysis, you go back, and you collect some more data, or you find some outliers, etc. in your data, you want to take them out. Then you go come back and you organize the data again. So this is a repeated um, process. Rather, all the all the the most of the, the these these processes are repetitive processes until and unless you are satisfied with the results that you want. The, the results and the conclusions make sense to you. The next thing that we do is we find out, and, I'll, and that, that is how I would suggest, is to find out the measures of dispersion. And what are the measures of dispersion? Well, um, the ones that we discussed in our last class in lecture two, and the measures of dispersion are finding out the variance and standard deviation. Uh, what does it tell you? The variance tells you the quality of your data. How, what is the spread in your data? Is are the the, the outliers that in are in your data? So now the value of the variance will tell you: is your data good? Is there are some uh, like the values that in, in, in are there? Do they make sense, or they are outliers? They, should they be there or not? Or they were selected by randomly? Well, all the data is selected randomly. However, those outliers are due to and uh, they might be because of some failure in your process in, in in your experiment. So the measures of dispersion tell you about the quality of your data. Then you calculate the standard error, and we also discussed that in our last class. Based on the measures of dispersion, we calculate the we compute the standard error and we compute the sample size. Now, if the sample size is not enough. If you don't have enough sample size, then what we do? Then we go back to our um, data collection process. However, collecting the uh, we go back to our data collection process, and then we uh, come back, and then we do this data cleaning, and then organizing, and then finding the measure of dispersion, and then finding out whether the sample size we have now is it enough or not. But when this is again, I would repeat, this is an ideal situation. Data collection is not an easy task. It's time consuming, it's resource consuming. Like, you need, really need money to collect the data, to, uh, to buy the equipment, to go out in the field. You need time, you need money for that. So data collection is not an easy, uh, I, I, I am in the field when we collect data all the time most of the time for all our case studies, for all our um, the traffic studies that we do. And like, for example, last week what happened is that we went to a county, we went to a city to collect the traffic volume data. However, it started raining so badly that we just lost one day. We couldn't lay out the counters there. We couldn't do the counts. So next day we laid out the counters. When we came back after two days, what we found is the data that we had is not good. So we'll have to go back again. We'll send some somebody back again next week. So again, data collection is not an easy process. So, and today in today's lecture, we'll discuss that how do we how analyze the data uh, like the small samples when we don't have enough data points. How do we what tests do we use to analyze that data? So um, the measure of dispersion and then the data collection. But whenever you if you if it's feasible and it's easier to you to get more data, not collect it, but get it from some other source, definitely you would try, you should try to get those data points. Um, then the thing is, then the other thing, the next thing is the data analysis. Now under data analysis, we have all these boxes. 
So C data visualization when you plot the graphs is also a type of data analysis. Sometimes you will find that uh, researchers and analysts, they just um, do analysis, they just conduct analysis by plotting the graphs. And even like the plotting proper graphs is very important. If you know how to categorize your variables, if you know which plot to use, when, that will definitely help you explain your problem and explain your data set. So data visualization is one of the techniques which we call graphical graphic analysis technique. Is, is, um, it comes under analysis. Then you determine the uh, measure of central tendency that again gives you, tells you uh, these are the parameters such as median, mode, and uh, average that again these are the basic parameters that give you an insight into the data set insight into your uh, like what what are the values what are the di I mean different um, gives gives you uh, idea about what sort of a data do you have if, if you are collecting um, water quality data then the average BOD will tell you what type of a facility it is how how good or bad it is and then you conduct tests of significance um for example um uh, you, you your hypothesis testing your z test your t test and then again um it's not always necessary to develop models it depends upon how you define your problem or what your what problem you are trying to solve so it's not necessary that you always develop models however sometimes what you do is you have your hypothesis you have certain assumptions that you want to see whether they are correct or not and then you conduct the um, Z test and T test and that is what we are going to discuss today. So this is this is a, this is a kind of a, these all these boxes define your uh, the way you conduct or the way you do statistical analysis. All these points, all these steps are necessary to reach to draw some conclusions to do so first is to formulate the problem and then how you analyze the the analyze the data set which relates to that problem and how you present your um, uh, conclusions to the audience then comes the here what is hypothesis testing so what is hypothesis testing now and this and this is again I said that this is this point is um, this testing is very important because um, sometimes what you do is you formulate a problem and you want to see whether your hypothesis whether your assumptions what whether your thought whatever you thought about that problem is it correct or not or is it should you accept it or should you reject it I, I should if I say it in, in statistical terminology Hypothesis is like any hypothet hypothetical situation or what, whatever, whatever you think about that problem. So for example, you think that average height of men in Pakistan is let's say 5 feet 8 inches. That's your hypothesis. And then you want to check this hypothesis against the data, against the data that you collect. And you want to see whether this hypothesis is rejected or accepted. So you formulated a problem. You say that you want to find out the average height of men in Pakistan and then you have a hypothesis against it. You say that the average height of men in Pakistan is 62 inches or 63 inches and then you test it against the data, using the data. So that is what hypothesis testing is. Um, then then the, 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 the hypothesis that you formulate, the problem that you formulate is called null hypothesis and it's defined as H naught here. This is H naught is called null hypothesis. This is the basic, this is the hypothesis, this is the problem that you formulate. For example, you say that the uh, your hypothesis is, your thought is, your idea is that the coin, that a coin is fair. So if a coin is fair and if when it 